listening to the Wax Pack Hero Sports Card Minute, a podcast where we discuss both the hobby and business sides of collecting. I'm your host, Mike Summer, and I want to help you buy, sell, and trade your way into a collection you'll love. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Wax Pack Hero Sports Card Minute. Well, I was a curious kid. And as long as I can remember, I'd always had a desire to learn things I didn't know. Trying new things was exciting. You know, as I look back, that's probably why I enjoyed school so much and why I have a wide range of interests and even why I love all sorts of foods. That sense of wonder also motivated me to find more efficient ways to work. As a seventh grader, I can remember testing different mowing paths around the yard to see which would get me done quicker, and I'd test what kind of sorting method I should use to get me through that 1991 hoops box the quickest. No matter what the chore, I was always looking for ways to do it smarter. And at the same time, that curiosity didn't mean I was a risk taker. I was still pretty reserved, and I didn't like to speak up unless I was confident that I knew what I was talking about. There was a delicate balance between the internal drive to step out and try something new and the fear of failure. Well, 30 years later, that's a balance that continues to be challenging for me, but I'm becoming more comfortable in finding it. Keeping a proper perspective and leveraging what I do know to make educated guesses have allowed me to continue to grow and develop new skills. A few weeks ago, I was considering making a big soccer card purchase. I don't know anything about soccer. I can name about five players and have little to no understanding of the different leagues. I had a lack of confidence in my ability to potentially profit due to being so uneducated on the sport. Well, I ultimately decided to go for it, and I want to share my thought process as why I made that decision. Hopefully you'll find it helpful as you consider some situations that you find yourself in, or maybe some of your friends. We'll dig in after this break. Starstock is a new trading card marketplace which is preparing to go live in April. Their goal is to be a faster and cheaper solution to sell cards, and they're looking for sellers who want to be some of the first to have their cards available for sale at launch. I'm going to be testing the platform with my own submission. They're offering a 5% sales commission with no other submission or processing fees. You send in your cards and they do all the work. Cards are insured and stored in a vault, and you can have your cards shipped to you at any time. You'll be able to buy, store, or flip cards at the push of a button. If you're interested in learning more about getting involved as a seller and getting your cards onto the site for launch, contact Mike Kuchera via email at mike at starstock.com. They're looking for sellers who have rookie and prospect cards of current players for the major sports. For more details, contact Mike Kuchera at mike at starstock.com or go to www.starstock.com. Okay, here's what I bought. I picked up three retail hanger cases of 2017-2018 Select Soccer for about $107 each, one case of 2018-19 Donruss Soccer Retail Jumbo Packs for $260, and one case of 2018-19 Donruss Blaster Boxes for um, $150. And so that's about $730 on cards from a sport I know nothing about. What was I thinking? Well, as I considered the purchase, I realized that direct knowledge about the players, the teams, the leagues, that was really only one factor which would contribute to the potential profit I could get from selling these cards. There were several other aspects which I had much more confidence in, which should theoretically contribute even more to my success. The first factor... I would call it maybe never stop listening. Last summer, Gary V started talking about how he thought soccer cards had some long-term potential due to the huge international fan base. I started hearing some other podcasts like the Heroes for Sale podcast randomly discussing um, soccer cards and some other podcasts were talking about the World Cup stickers and card sets. You know, there are a few podcasters who are fairly new to cards who are buying soccer cards, and it even came up on Dr. Beckett's podcast, which he recorded at his annual dinner a couple months ago. There seemed to be a buzz beginning to grow about soccer cards, and I was listening. I wasn't sure what to do with it yet, but the seeds were being planted. Next, I would say determine if your prior experience is transferable. One of my local collecting friends is a master of clearance retail. 
He's had years of success buying closeout boxes from DA and Blowout for non-mainstream sports like racing and WWE and even some of the Olympic sets that have been put out. After hearing him talk about some of his retail results, I had gradually founded some small-scale success of my own with racing and WWE. Well, last year, he also started talking about soccer. He had found success with the products that he bought. Not only was he able to sell the cards and find a market for them, but the case and box prices of the products he bought were eventually starting to rise as well. As I started looking, some of the products he told me about had gotten more expensive, but others were pretty much still sitting right at those same clearance prices he was talking about. This motivated me to take another step, which is research. I asked him which players he was finding success with. And I went back and took notes from those podcasts where I'd heard soccer being mentioned to see what they were talking about. I went through eBay and ComC listings to see who was moving. And then I started pulling up the reviews and checklists from the products which were still dirt cheap to see if any of those players were in there. I looked up complete set sales histories. I researched which retail specific parallels I could get and what those were selling for. And I even looked up sport lots listings to determine what kind of competition I'd have to, uh, for, for any listings you know, from the products I was going to open. Well, Select Soccer had a few things going for it. First, Mbappe had been a big seller, and he has both an insert and a base card in the set. Plus, his base card in the, is a more limited field level tier, and so eventually people would realize that this would be one of the earliest and hardest cards to find of him. You know, it turned out that there are as many field level cards in each hanger box as there are in a hobby box. Now that is value, and not too many people are going to realize that. So a single hanger box has as many of the hardest to find cards as a hobby box? Yeah, sign me up. In addition, there's exclusive parallels and virtually no competition on sport lots. Donruss was a very similar story. Exclusive parallels, optic inserts, and several key players were all inside these packs. Other products had a similar mix and they'd already started to rise, but these Donruss cases were still sitting there for less than $8 a blaster box and are about $22 for a jumbo box. Again, there's very little Com C or Sport Lines competition for those base and inserts. So there I was, trying to make this decision. I'd started with very little direct knowledge about the players or the sport, But I didn't need that knowledge to research who others were talking about. I didn't need that knowledge to know the success I'd had in selling cards on ComC and Sport Lots when there was little or no competition. And I didn't need that knowledge to know that other soccer products had already started to rise from similar prices over the last year, but these hadn't yet moved. Was it going to be a guaranteed win? Oh No, not at all. But did I feel I had learned enough to take an educated shot? Especially when my initial purchase was going to be paid for with profits? Well, you bet I did. So I went ahead and placed the orders. Now you may be wondering, what have my results been? Well, that happened about a month ago. And over the last month, I've been in the midst of sorting and listing a big ten to 15,000 card collection that I had purchased. And so my free time has been pretty consumed with that project. And so I hadn't even had a chance to crack the cases. And in a real-life example of, well, that escalated quickly... Over the last month, the prices of the select cases have risen from about $100 to about $160 each. The blaster cases have risen from about $150 to $300, and the jumbo boxes went from $260 to $580. At this point, I might just be better off selling them all sealed. Based on some of the other products, I thought there'd be a chance for the sealed prices to appreciate, but I didn't expect it to happen near this fast. I thought this would be a good long-term, grind-out-a-profit type project. At this point, I'm leaning towards opening one of the select cases since they haven't quite risen as much as some of the others, and one single Donruss blaster box that was one of the free gifts from DA Card World. I'm going to keep holding the other sealed cases to sell at some point in the future. You know, I think just at the with the cost of shipping, selling those cases still need to go up a little bit more before I'll be comfortable with the, the profit that I'll make, but it's gone up enough that I'm not necessarily comfortable busting them at this point. You know, at the end of the day, the situation is going to work out positively for me. But more importantly, I want to share the thought process that I use to make the decision. I think there's all kinds of situations like this that we find ourselves in. We have the opportunity to make a decision, take a chance, or try something new. 
but we usually have to start with some sense of incomplete information. But if you take a second to think about what you've been learning and what else you've done that may be comparable, you can start to fill in some of those gaps. And by putting in some work to research different scenarios, you can fill in even more of them. Maybe, just maybe, you can gain enough confidence to take a chance, to gain even more experience, and to have some fun learning along the way. The bottom line is, don't let the fear of the unknown keep you from growing and trying new things. If you find yourself in similar situations, let me know. Reach out on Twitter at the Mike Summer. Send me an email at waxpackhero at gmail.com. I would love to hear about similar situations that you found yourself in. Please take a second to rate and review the podcast on Apple Podcasts. I really appreciate getting the feedback of what you like about the show and what I could be doing better. So please take a second to shoot me some feedback and leave a rating and review. And also, I'd really appreciate it if you checked out the Hobby Hotline. It's a live call-in show that several of us podcasters do live every Saturday morning. Follow at Hobby Hotline for more information. Well, that's all I have for today. I'll catch you next time.